Hi friends, welcome back to Julie at Home. I am a homeschooling mom of four and I try to give you resources and encouragement and a little bit of a peek into our homeschool here on this channel. This video is about preschool and it is a continuation of my curriculum series for the academic year 2023 to 2024. This year I will have a fifth grader, a third grader, a four-year-old who will be doing pre-kindergarten and a two-year-old who will be doing toddler school. If you missed my other videos in the series and you want to check them out, I will have the playlist linked below. So again, this video is on preschool. I love doing preschool. I'm very excited about it. And these are going to be activities and subjects aimed at my four and two year olds. Most of them are aimed at my four year old, but this video is going to be focused on subjects we are doing together. They will also each be getting a little bit of individual school time uh, with mommy and I will do separate videos for each of them on what my plan is for that individual time. In this video I'm going to be talking about the subjects that we're doing and I'm also going to touch on some themes. I chose some themes this year that will be woven in to many of the subjects, not all of them, as well as their individual school subjects to some extent. And so I will mention them throughout and I will come back to them more towards the end of the video. And some of this might make more sense when I do my routine video, so look out for that after my curriculum series is done. On to the subjects. I'm going to start with circle time. We've been doing this for years, and you may have noticed this may be the first year that I did not mention it in my family subjects video for my fifth and third grader. I have decided to really target our circle time at the preschoolers. And the older ones are invited to join us if they would like, but especially my fifth grader has so many individual subjects now, we will probably be doing circle time while she's doing those subjects. So schedule wise, I just found it easier to aim it at the little ones and have it not be required for the older ones to join us. Circle time, if you don't know, is uh, I base it on a Waldorf kind of circle time where it's seasonal songs and stories and poems and finger plays. And um, I've been doing this with my children for years, so I kind of have uh, some of the same songs that come back. Every once in a while I look back over some materials that I have and she might choose some new songs to incorporate in and uh, some new poems. I think this coming year I'm just going to use what I did this past year. I did a lot of work kind of reworking some of the things and um, I have a plan for each month and so I'm just going to keep keep going with what that is. My four-year-old is really into it at this age, so it should be really fun to do. And my two-year-old's just starting to kind of get engaged with material. I do I do have my circle time binder here so you can kind of see what I do. Um, we kind of have a welcoming song that we don't always do, but we do sometimes. And then we do our calendar time as part of circle time, which they love. Um, and currently we are counting in English, Italian, and French <laughs> in the, on the calendar. Um, I have poems, I have songs, I have finger plays, and then at the end we share what we are grateful for. Um, and the binder just, it keeps like lyrics to songs and well, I'll have like the month in here that we're doing. We're actually on July. I think July's in here too. Can't remember. Um, and I'll, I'll have the list of the songs and poems that we're doing for that month. And then I'll have lyrics and, and poems written out in here so you can cut out oh, there's there's july august <laughs> so um it's kind of messy right now uh i'm still i'm kind of just starting to reset all of our school materials so that might be another video i share with you a really important part of our preschool is reading so i read them lots and lots of picture books sometimes we incorporate some chapter books especially ones that are like treasuries of stories such as um, Brambley Hedge is a really good example of that or James Harriet's Treasury for Children. My current four-year-old doesn't quite have the attention span for being read to that my older children did at her age. Um, my youngest one does though so um, I'm still kind of playing around with the best way to work on increasing her attention span with that. We've been working on it um, but I have lots and lots of picture books so I will be reading to them seasonal favorites just favorites in general. I pulled a couple out here because these are some of our favorites. This is Pippa and Pell. And this is, hopefully it's not too much glare, Baby Bear Sees One. So we have, these are both parts of series that we really like. Um, and so I will pull out some favorites, some seasonal books. And this is one of those areas where the theme might come in. I might have some picture books related to the theme we're doing. Usually I tie that into circle time. We kind of go from circle time into reading. And I will also incorporate reading at other points of the day. I did mention before that we're counting in English, Italian, and French, and I am exploring French with my children. I'm learning it myself. Um, if you see my videos in the past, you'll know that I've done Italian a bit with my older two. We've kind of fallen off of that for right now, and uh, I might pick it back up later, but um, 
that some things had to shift around. And since I really want to learn French, my I was practicing and my four year old seemed really interested. So we're doing that. I'm doing that just a little bit with her. So again, we're counting at calendar time. And then I ended up getting this resource here. It's called One Third Stories. I'm going to show you their logo here. They have several different languages. So they have French. I know they have Italian. I think they have Spanish. They might have German. Um, you'd have to go look. Um, so you can just pull up their website there. I believe they're a British company. Um, and it's like a subscription box that you get every month. And it comes with a story. And um, I, I don't know, remember what number this is. But the stories start more in English and add more and more of the language you're learning. So in this case, French, as you go along. So you can see the... the bolded words there are French. It comes with an audio version of the book digitally that they send to you and um, that's really helpful because especially with French um, I don't know how to pronounce all the things. Uh, so um, yeah we've been doing this a little bit already and they seem to really enjoy it. It also usually comes with some activities and such as well. We haven't done that as much but we may. So um, we're going to incorporate that We'll also probably incorporate a little bit of Little Pim. Now this is another language learning program. It's a TV show essentially. And um, you buy, I don't know, you can pay in various ways, but it's a paid subscription. And there's lots of videos and lots of different languages you can do. So um, I have the kind of account where I have access to all the different languages. Um, and so I've done that with Italian with my kids before. And um, I, I also have French on there as well. So um, that's something that we might utilize, especially um, for some afternoon time. When I'm doing some schoolwork with my older kids, such as science or history, where I don't really have a great way to incorporate the younger ones or they just don't want to be involved that day, it might be something that I can just turn on that will occupy them for a little while. Uh, little Pim is a panda and he's very cute and he just, like the videos will just play in French. Art is also a big thing for us. We love doing art. My little ones all, all love doing art as well. And um, so we'll be just basically mostly playing with different mediums. Again, with themes, we might have a project here or there, a craft project or art project that's related to a theme. But for the most part, it'll just be free playing with the medium and just them being creative and whatever. I don't, um, I don't love having too many things that are too... Um, teacher or parent like directed when it comes to art. That's just not my preference. Um, I prefer to just give them, you know, some paint and paper or some clay and see what they do from it. Um, so yeah, we will have the occasional project, but it will mostly be exploring different mediums. And my goal is to do a purposeful activity such as, you know, watercolor painting or clay or such. Uh, at least once a week. They will also probably do things like coloring and Play-Doh more often because those are really good activities to keep them occupied at the table while I'm doing school with the other kids. I also do try to include them in our artist study. I talk about that a little bit more in my family subjects video and I would I'm planning on doing a more in-depth video on how we do artist study in the future. Um, but I try to have, you know, picture books that are more accessible for the younger group in, you know, each study that we do about each artist. And they're always just along for the ride looking at the pictures and stuff as well. Nature journaling. So we're making a push to really do more nature journaling this year than we have the past couple years. Um, when I had my fourth child, I just, the pregnancy and then I'm juggling the four children, I really have not been doing this as much as I would like to because I love nature journaling. So I'm planning on getting each of them actually their own nature journals. My my four-year-old has one, um, but I think she's worked through a lot of it. Um, so we'll get them new ones. And part of, part of what we do in nature journaling with the younger ones is just practice going through the book in order um, instead of just flipping to random pages and scribbling. Um, so we do that. And then they're just around for us. We look at things in nature and then we draw it. And I don't expect what they draw to necessarily look like the thing or you know I really don't have many expectations it's just the sitting and the doing it looking and doing um, I do have some themes I tried to pick one theme a month that focused on nature um, and I used uh, this exploring nature with children and I'm gonna do an, an in-depth look at this for you guys I've actually had this for many many years and I used it years ago um, when my older two were you know preschoolish age um, so <laughs> Uh, I'm excited to look at this again, and um, but it does have different themes in here, one for each week, I believe, of the academic year. It might be the whole year. I can't remember how many weeks. Um, but for each week and theme it has, it has book suggestions, and um, for most of them it also has a poem and an art piece you can look at. Um, so it's, yeah, it's got really, really good ideas in here. So I utilized this. We're not doing one of these themes every week. 
But again, I tried to pick about one a month and um, we will be, you know, using some books and some other things and learn about that and do it in our nature journal. And that is something that'll also include my fifth and third graders. For music, so I did already mention during circle time we do sing and do finger plays and such like that. So that really is really good uh, music education. I do try to include some of the uh, children's song that you hear a lot, like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, um, Itsy Bitsy Spider, things like that in our circle time so that they have that common knowledge of the children's songs, as well as some more kind of Waldorfy style seasonal songs and some others that are favorite of mine. I love musical theater, so some of those creep in as well. They also do composer study with the rest of the family. They're really just there being exposed to the music. I'm not really asking them yet to recognize things. Um, we we'll probably next year we'll get into a little bit more learning about the instruments, but right now it's just being exposed to the music. And then lastly, we are doing a preschool prodigies. And we started this a little bit this past year with this age group. I had my older two doing it when they were younger. Um, but I think this is the four-year-old and the two-year-old to some extent is the perfect age for this program. They actually have a lot more than just preschool now. I think they have like a tot school and they might have stuff for older children as well. Um, it's really expanded since it, it started when my oldest was in preschool. Um, but basically what it is, is it's online videos um, and they do go through, they have rhythm ones and they have ones on different notes and we have the bells that go along with them that they can play along with. Um, so this is another thing that I will probably take out in the afternoon when I'm doing a, a big subject with my older two to occupy them. It is something that they enjoy and they ask for, um, they call it Mr. Rob because most of the videos are done by Mr. Rob. So that's music and they really enjoy it, which makes me happy. And the last preschool subject I'm going to mention is outside or movement. Um, so when we go outside, they're just naturally moving a lot. Um, and my goal, ideal, in an ideal world, we'd get outside for at least an hour every day. That's not always practical. And especially during our winters here, it is really just a lot to bundle everybody, to go outside for a short amount of time and then come back in and unbundle when it's super cold and snowy outside. Um, I also, like my youngest one, doesn't tend to like walking in the snow. Um, and that was true when my current four-year-old was, was a toddler as well. The snow just gets high and it's hard to walk through when you're tiny. Um, so I end up having to carry them. Anyway, it's exhausting. Sometimes it takes us longer to get dressed than we actually spend outside. That was a little rant to you, but point being that I also need some movement activities for inside. So I'm also just keeping in mind, um, we might do Cosmic Kids yoga, some other yoga activities. I might set up some kind of other fun movement for them, um, but I wanna make sure we're doing something so that they get the wiggles out and just like, they're, they're people. I think people need to move in general, but especially little people need to move their bodies. And we also will try to get outside as much as we can, um, especially right now when it's nice out and in the fall, it's beautiful. So we will be getting outside as much as possible now. And then we still do go outside in the cold. It's just honestly not my favorite thing. So I want to talk about themes for a little bit. I'm going to list them for you in a minute, but first I just wanted to say I drew them from a couple places. One is exploring nature with children that I mentioned earlier. Um, we're also trying a curriculum called Buckets and Berries, which I will talk about quite a bit more when I talk about my four-year-old's individual subjects. We're gonna be utilizing it quite a bit for that. And I'll also do a separate video on this. This was a curriculum that was sent to me and um, it looks like a really fantastic um, fit for our family. It's you know Montessori and Charlotte Mason inspired. So um, I will give you more information on that because I think some of you might really enjoy it as well. They have a different theme for each month, so I'm incorporating those into my general themes as well. And then I have a few in here that are just things that I know my children are interested in and I, you know, want to highlight for them. A theme can be anything from maybe we just take out some picture books on that subject, or it could be something that, again, is like a buckets and berries theme where there's a lot of um, activities from it in her individual school. Maybe we do some things in her group school as well. Um, or it could be a nature subject where we're nature journaling together and there's books and there's like maybe a poem and maybe art. So it could really be an expansive, like almost unit, like preschool unit theme, or it could be just I pull out a couple books. Um, so let me read to you some of these themes and keep in mind a lot of these, again, are not like full on units. So there's a lot listed. I'm looking at my sheet here, so I'm looking down. Uh, farm animals, flowers and blossoms, rainbows, trains, bees, seeds, pumpkins, autumn leaves, 
fungus, the moon, calendar, turkey, bear, evergreens, weather, moss, animals in winter, my body, birds, pond, rocks, plant life cycle, spring trees, caterpillars, biome, ocean, and bugs. So I know that seems like a lot. That's why I preface this with some of these and most of these are going to be just like very simple. For example, we are starting school in the next couple weeks and we're going to be going to the county fair right around when we're starting. And um, our county fair is a big ag agricultural fair. So I will be pulling out picture books on farm animals and we'll be talking about them a bit. So that's just going to be simple that way. And that way, when we see them at the fair, we'll recognize and maybe know the sounds of the animals. I might also incorporate something like cards of matching mommy and baby animals, something like that. Very, very simple. So that's my plan for the preschool activities I'm going to be doing with my four and two year old together. Stay tuned for my video on their individual subjects. Until then, I hope you are all well. Bye friends.